Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, I'm going to be talking about complex time series forecasting in Python. And this is going to be covering the manual method, whereas we will look at a more automated approach in the following video. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting. So we already covered uh, basically what a complex time series is and um, when you would want to use one of these more complex models to forecast it. And now we're just going into the actual example of how to carry that out. Um, so we're going to look in this video at applying the quarterly seasonal trend model to be able to forecast quarterly data which has uh, seasonal effects in it. So let's go over to the Jupyter Notebook, which is on the course site. So I'd encourage you to go through it on your site as well. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is load in the data so that we can work with it. So I'm going to use a fin statement here in order to uh, load the data into the financial statement structure. Um, so it's taking a second to load everything in, and then we should see um, the statements come up here when it's done. Now you'll see some other output coming out here, um, basically items which it wasn't able to load into statement items. Um, as long as you don't see anything um, important here, then you should be fine. Um, and the other warning here is about um, both operating income and EBIT were in the statement, and so it used the value from EBIT. So then we see the statements here. It's loaded them in properly, um, and we see all the different line items on the statements. And we're working with quarterly data here. And we have um, 39 different periods here. Um, so this goes out quite far. Um, so plenty of data to work with the forecast. So the first thing we can do is plot uh, the item that we want to forecast. So let's look at forecasting the revenue here. Um, and with fin statement, when you pull out um, a line item from these statements, um, then it's going to be a pandas series. And so that's why we can do dot plot dot line on that series in order to see it plotted over time. So looking at the sales data here, this is, you know, what we had um, seen in the prior video on the slides. Um, there is definitely a repeating pattern going on here in the data. There seems to be a trend as well, uh, but we definitely need a more complex model in order to capture the seasonality shown here with the repeating patterns. So let's look at using the quarterly seasonal trend model. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create these dummy variables as we um, explained in the prior video. So again, that's just the data that we're working with. A quick look at it. And now we can make a data frame out of that uh, because we're going to need to add additional columns here. And so we can create a T variable. And we um, looked in a um, prior video on simple time series forecasting with the um, linear trend model. One way to do that with set index. Here's another way that we can create this T variable with, with range. Um, so either way works just fine. Um, and here's just a look at the end of the data. We can see it's going out to the 39th period with t equals 38. So it all looks correct. So in order to get to four dummy variables, which are one, when this um, certain period is within a certain quarter, and zero otherwise. First, we need to get a variable which says what month is the observation in. 
so thankfully, um, dates uh, in pandas, the pandas timestamp uh, data type does have a dot month attribute. So you can just directly pull out the month from the date. Um, so we can take the index basically, which has all these dates um, and take, take them out of there and take the month out of each one. Um, so that's what we're doing, but we're just putting that all into a list comprehension to do them all at once and create a new variable, the month variable column um, with those months. So then we see um, here it's January and we get one is the month, then April we get four, July we get seven, October we get 10, and then that pattern um, just keeps repeating. Even though we go into the next year, we get those same values for the month variable. So, um, you know, certainly we could write some logic which creates these variables based off these values, uh, just you know, saying, is it equal to one? Well, this one's gonna be one, otherwise zero. Is it equal to four? Well, the second one's gonna be equal to one, otherwise zero, and so on. But it's a little tedious, and this is definitely a common thing that people have to do, and so Pandas has created this get dummies function, um, which is going to be able to do this for us. So you just pass it the data frame, and then you pass it what columns you want to make the dummies on. Here it's just the month column, and you can see um, in the created data frame that now it has dummies saying, is this the first month, is this the fourth month, seventh and tenth month. Um, so there we see now we have what we need for these quarterly dummies, because every time it's first quarter we get a one here. Um, and otherwise it's zero. Every time it's second quarter, we get a one here, otherwise it's zero, and so on. So this is what we need in order to pick up the seasonal effect. So um, here is just putting those steps into a uh, function so that it um, you can just immediately have the data frame that you need for forecasting from a series. Um, and so you can see here, I'm passing it the cache um, and it's making a whole, the full uh, forecasting data frame for the cache as well. So now um, if you wanna go forward with the quarterly seasonal trend model, you can just uh, use this function in your own model to prepare the data frame. So now we're going to go and fit the model. Um, and so we're going to go through the classic stats models OLS approach. Um, but we need to tell it that the T as well as each of these columns are going to be our variables. And depending on your company, it's going to have the quarters uh, in different months. And so we certainly can't explicitly say that the Columns should be month one, month four, etc. Uh, but then if you try to run a different company through the same code, then it's not going to work necessarily because the quarters could be different. So there is a general way we can do this that's going to work for any company is we can just grab the columns which have month and the name. Um, so we can see um, that if we just uh, start from the columns, which will tell us all the columns, and we iterate through them with this list comprehension, and we just say if the string month is in the column, then we're going to include it in this list. And so that's how we get uh, these four different month columns automatically, regardless of what the actual month was. So then all the X columns are going to be T plus those. And so now we can go to run the regression. So importing stats models as usual, running the OLS regression with the Y is going to be uh, whatever our variable of interest for forecasting, um, so the revenue here. And then the X, we've already selected the X columns and we just wanna add the constant to that. And then we fit and see the summary. 
And so here, then we're able to see uh, that we have the intercept and we have the T coefficient as well as the coefficient for each one of these monthly quarterly dummy variables. So then um, we can go and predict the future. Um, also, we can see that the R squared was, was quite high. That's a good sign uh, that we're going to have a decent forecast. Um, so we need to predict the next period. In order to do that, we need to know, well, what T uh, is for the next period. So we can just take the maximum of the T that's already there and then add one to it. And that's going to get the next T. Um, and we want to do the same with the dummies. We've got to be able to select the appropriate dummy. Um, and so we see that the last quarter was uh, month seven. And so the next one is going to be month 10. Um, so in order to get the forecast, then we take the constant, we add the T variable times uh, this T that we calculated, and then we add on the dummy corresponding to the month uh, that this observation is in, and we get our result there. But it's a little hard to see, you know, especially with these seasonal patterns, if just forecasting a single period is working correctly, really you have to, to bring it out further. Um, and so let's look at how we can do that. So we want to forecast for a number of dates in the future. Um, and so we can use Pandas' date range uh, function in order to create a range of dates that we want to forecast. Um, and so we're going to start from our last quarter. We're going to have periods every three months. And we're going to have 12 periods. And that's what gets us to um, this here, where the um, first period is uh, the last one here. And then we are going to every period in the future, up to 12 periods. So um, then we can create the forecast for all these different periods with a loop here. So we're just going to loop through the forecast dates and also um, use enumerate to get a counter variable um, so that we can adjust T appropriately and store all the forecasts in a dictionary. Um, so we want the first uh, forecasted period to be um, adding one onto the uh, previous T. And so we can call that the T offset, and that's going to be the counter plus one, so that it's one on the first loop. And so then the um, T is going to be what the last T was plus this offset variable. And then we can pull out the month of the um, specific date that we're working with and then assign into the forecast dictionary the result of our prediction. Same thing that we saw before, constant plus the T times this T variable. And now we're just pulling the appropriate month um, using string formatting. So we do that and we see we get all these uh, forecasts here. So then we can create a series um, from the forecast because it's a dictionary. Uh, we can just directly create a series from it. And then we can plot that. So uh, this definitely looks like some of the patterns we have been seeing in the historicals. So that's already a good sign. Uh, but it's really best to evaluate the forecast when also looking at it with the historical. So we can use pandas' concatenate function, concat, um, pass it a list of the two series, uh, the historical as well as the forecasted. Um, that creates the full uh, series with all those values, and then we can plot that. And now we see the whole thing. Um, so it looks like this turned out pretty well because our forecast here started uh, around here and you can really barely tell where uh, the historical stops and the forecast starts. Uh, it does get a little more regular here, um, but basically it looks like we did a pretty good job 
of forecasting this time series, even though it had this seasonality component. So that is how we can um, deal with seasonality in time series forecasting in Python uh, with a more manual approach. And then we'll come back in the following video to look at uh, using fin statement to kind of do this automatically for us without uh, so many steps. So thanks for listening and see you next time.